I'm finishing up the work on this Packard Bell 486 that I had a video of the other day. I made any of the floppies that the system had images for on there, but I don't think it includes things like the Packard Bell front end and uh, some of the other software that was installed on there. So I decided to pull the drive out and connect it to my workbench computer and back up everything onto a folder on there and determine what belongs on that machine that was too big for the floppies and whatnot. And uh, everything's going to go onto a CD so that if it's not on a floppy disk it will at least be on there and can be put back on later if need be because I know they, they give you the disk images for like the main programs and stuff but I don't know if the customized uh, things are going to be reinstalled from those disks and I don't really want to risk losing any of the original software that came with it I just have to wipe the drive very thoroughly get rid of the personal data that was on there and uh, put the factory stuff back on and then this thing's going to go off to a new owner so just waiting for everything to copy over here and make the CD and get on with it hopefully those backups are good because that data is going to be gone otherwise I'm running uh, a program called Derek's Boot and Nuke I'm using a Dell Dimension 2400 because I don't think that Packard Bell can boot off a CD-ROM drive, it's too old for that. So, I'm doing it the easy way. Look how slow this old hard drive is. It even took a long time to read the data off that drive and copy it onto that HP system. It's, uh, it's an old timer. So this is going to be going for quite a while. I'm going to go take care of some other things and uh, when this is done I'll reinstall it into the computer and put all the software back on. Hopefully everything's going to work. Hard drive has all been wiped and I'm ready to start it up with the first DOS disk and the floppy drive. I haven't done something like this in years. Meaning I haven't installed uh, something off of floppies from the get-go. I mean I remember back before I had a hard drive, I had to use a floppy all the time, but man, it's been, I want to say it was probably around 1993 or 1994 that um, I was still using floppies full time. And I really don't remember for sure, maybe it was a little before that. The CMOS battery seems to hold a charge on this, it's been off for you know, overnight or a day or two and it hasn't lost its settings. Non-system disk, that's not very encouraging considering that was my DOS disk. So, probably gonna have to look and uh, get some different disks and hope that these ones that were made from the images are still good. Once again I'm an idiot that fails to read. I was just not paying attention and put the Windows disk in instead of the DOS disk. So that will not work. Let's try this again. Now it's reading. Much better. Man, I haven't done this in so long. I'm going to see if I've got something to clean the lens on my camera. It's driving me crazy. This is going to take a while. Good thing it's only a 270 some meg hard drive. I'd be sitting here all night probably took about you know, maybe a little over an hour to make all these floppies from the images. Floppies don't exactly write very fast, especially when it's doing a verify both ways when, when it's writing a disk. It's 
really reminds me of when I was a lot younger, back in like middle school or high school, working on the older computers and uh, my first PCs, you know, Windows wasn't even, it was around, but, you know, at the time all my stuff was second hand, so I pretty much grew up on DOS and um, when I got Windows 3.1 second hand after it was already pretty old, it felt like something brand new to me and something modern, but after moving up to Windows 95 from there, it was like a whole new dimension. Made my uh, 386 feel kind of weak though at the time. I mean, 4 megs of RAM and hard drive is real slow. But back then, I used to not pay as much attention to speed. I used to just try to run as much as I could, you know, on that system, even if it sacrificed a little speed or frame rate or whatever I was doing. Especially with games, I would load up games and I would set the graphics settings to like Pentium. Uh, even though I only had that 386 running at 25 megahertz and uh, I just wanted it to look pretty I guess there were some games like Epic Pinball and Jazz Jackrabbit and Commander Keen that ran very well and had very nice graphics for for the hardware they were running on when I got uh, I started out with an EGA video card uh, connected to a CGA monitor which gave me the 16 colors but and I could use everything on the EGA card except for the I think it was a 640 by 200 high-res EGA mode that would just over scan the monitor and uh, you couldn't see the picture but uh, after a few years of that I actually got a 14 inch Packer Bell VGA monitor or Super VGA monitor for Christmas with a um, see what kind of video card was that it was a Trident 8900 video card with one meg of memory and uh, it was just breathtaking to me to see uh, you know picture quality stuff just everything looked so real on that screen in fact I remember the monitor it was a Packard Bell 1412 SL 14 inch monitor and it had those optional speakers that mounted on the sides of it in fact, I think I've got a couple of those monitors sitting in my uh, parts room at work. And, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I really wanted those speakers and never did find any. But, you know, now that I'm old and I don't care anymore, uh, there's tons of those things turning up all over the place. I can actually hear the hard drive formatting so old school I could hear a lot of things if I'd shut my mouth once in a while eh? yeah it actually remembered the date and the clock is also right wow so that clock card is also working good I'm going to let this uh, do its thing and get everything copied over and we'll start on Windows next. Double your hard disk with double space. No thanks. I prefer uncompressed, just like my audio. Man, back when I used to do this on my daily use computer, it used to seem like it was lightning fast. Now I'm used to... Uh, 8 core processor with a solid state drive and 8 gigs of RAM I mean you get used to not really waiting for things to load and then uh, you go and do something like this if you have a 386 or better processor optimize your PC by using MemMaker boy I remember doing that trying to get games to run making config.sys and autoexec.bat files and Optimize, optimizing them and DOS equals high comma UMB 
a bunch of other crap I had to put in there just to make every little bit of memory available because a lot of the games I played back then used the 640 kilobyte base system memory and it was always low. Sorry about the uh, focus and all the moving around. I'm just lazy today, I guess. I'm extremely tired. I didn't get much sleep last night and I worked all day and now I'm down here messing with computers even more. The hard drive light is always on. <laughs> you know, UXW Bill had a computer, I can't remember which one it was, one of the IBM PC videos, and uh, he had a hard drive light that stopped working when Windows loaded or something like that, and then it would start working again once it came out of. Uh, protected mode. I wonder if this computer is the same way. Strange. I'd like to know what happened to the original five and a quarter floppy drive. It's probably long gone. Originally it did, of course, it did not have a CD-ROM in it from the factory. The DOS that came with this Packard Bell actually has a fourth disc. I wonder if it's going to you know, ask for that here or if it's going to want me to do a separate install. I don't know why I'm recording all this. Well, I didn't ask for the fourth disc. It must be something separate. I apologize for the amount of rambling in this video. I just figured you guys might like to see the actual installation process even though it's extremely boring for most people. Uh, gives me a chance to uh, talk about some things anyway when there's nothing else going on. <laughs> well, that was simple enough. Just like I suspected, it's a separate install. Remember this setup screen? It's been a while. The VGA adapter actually detected as a Video 7 VGA 512K. I wonder how much memory this can be expanded to. I'm guessing 1 meg of uh, video memory. I might even have some of those special chips laying around that will fit the uh, upgrade sockets on this motherboard. I have to take a look around. I'll continue this when it's almost done. Now we're on to the GUI of the Windows installation. Boy, I remember when I was installing this on my uh, 386. One of my disks was bad, or my floppy cable was bad, or something, and it would get to like the last disk, and then it would keep asking for the disk even though it was in there, and uh, I couldn't go any farther. I had to find another, another disk or another drive. I don't remember exactly what happened, but I was pretty frustrated.
Probably the worst experience I had with installing windows through floppies was when my cousin got Windows 95 on floppy disk because I think his mom forgot that the computer had a CD-ROM drive or didn't realize that it was uh, the floppy version and I think it took over an hour no it took even longer than that it took a good couple hours to install Windows 95 because it was like a huge stack of disks I want to say it was more than 24 disks and it took forever disk number four Anyway, I'll let this uh, move a little farther on. Well, it doesn't look like it uh, installed the Packard Bell Navigator or any of that other extra stuff. So it's a good thing that I made a backup of the uh, everything that was on the drive. And be putting all that on CD. See if Windows actually installed itself here. It looks good so far. This is what I remember the most. A plain old Windows startup. <laughs> All right. Well, I got a few programs to install, and uh, then I gotta put all the stuff, the extra stuff, onto that CD and get this thing out the door.